innocent, really, in it. Just show up. Be your authentic self. Be there. Yeah. And, you know, just knowing that someone's there and, okay, they've taken the time. That's all it is. You know, like, um, as I said in the sometimes you hit rock bottom. And it's to do with the mental illness side of things. Everybody's prepared to say, give me a call if you're feeling bad. But how many people called me to see how I was? No. How unfair is that to put that weight on somebody because they won't do it? No. It, not a chance They won't do it. Not a chance in hell that you, you'll sit there and go, oh, geez, I'm, I'm rock bottom. I've got to call someone. And the, the things that go through your head that you don't want to put a burden on their shoulders. You know, if your audience hasn't seen that clip, make sure that it's available to them, Pete, because you shared something in that story that impacted me on a deep, deep level. And it's, it, it's regarding the very element that you're talking about right now. When we do share our discomfort and people say, I'm here for you, call me if you need anything. How cruel and unfair that is. Because if you reach out to ask somebody how they're doing and they share that they're struggling, <coughs> they're struggling, excuse me. Yep. Here's the term you use that I absolutely love. <laughs> You've entered a social contract. And it's your responsibility as a caring friend to reach yep. out. Not put the onus on someone you know who is suffering from either emotional or physical angst to reach out to you when you need something because odds are they'll never do it. You'll read about their demise. You'll read about them having committed suicide. You'll read about them <clears throat> dying of the, of the disease and, and wonder why they never reached out to you. They have so much going on on that front. So thank you for that. Because it raised yeah, an awareness in me, right? Like that, that social contract. When, when I, you reach out, yeah, when you reach out and you ask somebody how they're doing, it better be from a place of a genuineness. Yeah, and that's the thing that, you know, like, to be honest, I was, I was struggling a bit when you came to visit. But I got extremely worse after that. And I was watching all of the, you know, are you okay? And all the different organisations that, that, and this is the flip side to it, that promote to help people with mental health, to try to give them the tools to help someone with mental health. But nowhere did they talk about the consequence. And that's where I come up with the, the idea that if you ask someone how they're going, that's the social contract. Yeah, no, that's powerful. Because That's powerful. Because <clears throat> there's two scenarios that are going to happen, and you, you touched on one of them. And one of them is going to the funeral parlour that they don't want to go to. And the other one is being the person opens up to you. And when they open up to you, are you prepared to listen unconditionally without voicing an opinion? And this is the other one that people do say to you. And that is, well, that's stupid that you think that way. Pop that one when you're suffering from mental illness. Mm -hmm. Being told that... You know, because you're opening up and you're feeling bad and you're feeling down and you feel like that you want to take your own life, that you're stupid. So what that does is that just pushes that person aside. You don't say anything, you just push that person aside, but you just go backwards at a rate of knots. You Absolutely. Know, and, and the periods of loss and frustration that you, you, you were talking about where, you know, your father called you stupid. So you go back into that pocket again. And you just get, it's like a hamster on a wheel with, with some people. that They don't understand that the depths of despair that people are at when they're at rock bottom. So You see, we, we, we get anchored to pain. 
We get anchored to pain every time there's an incident. And, you know, here's six little words for the audience to write down. Yep. Different, better, more hopes, dreams, and expectations. Those are the elements where we're anchored to pain events in our lives because we are incomplete emotionally. Yeah. And what I love about our process is that's the destination for us. We prepare people to complete emotionally. And that's where we get to pull those little hooks out of the soft spots of our spirit, but we need the courage to be able to talk about them. And, you know, you said something critical. You said something important. <clears throat> our job is to simply listen. In, in our profession as grief and loss specialists, we refer to ourselves as hearts with ears. Yeah, you know, like the, the famous saying, God gave us two of these Yeah, and one of them. Yeah. We don't analyze, we don't judge, and we don't criticize. Yeah. Well, Don, let's come to that time. Wow. We probably, I've got a time here and I know how long we've been ticking along for. And for you to give me your time and thoughts and understanding, like we could go for, I could do a Joe Rogan on this with you, you know, go for <laughs> three, four hours. <laughs> But, you know, I've got to be fair here. But we can have more episodes. Of, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Episodes. I love that, Pete. <clears throat> First of all, how would someone uh, get in contact with you if they felt that they connected with you in this conversation and that they feel that they could um, go down the, the path that you take people? Um. I, I, like this is ironic, right? Because I, I, I poo-poo the social media platforms, but it's the easiest way for people to connect. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I can be found at uh, on, on Facebook at dvlachance.com. Um, that's the link to my bio. Facebook is, uh, I, if you just do a search on loss specialist, yeah, I can provide you the, with the links if you want to. And I'll, put have, them. I'll have the links. I've got them in, in your bio and everything like that. But, it, but the main one for me for, for people to go to is dvlachance.com. Absolutely. Because yeah. my bio is there. And, yeah. <clears throat> you know, I'm raw in it, Pete. <clears throat> you know, our motto is we go first. Yep. And, you know, it's just like the sometimes you hit rock bottom. You know, I, I was going to edit it. And I started listening to it and I said, nah, I can't edit this. I just got to let it go as, as, as raw as it's got to be because we talk about turning up and being our authentic self. And if you're editing things, you're not authentic. That's how I see it. It's Yeah, ego's taken over. Yeah. Yeah, so when I do these shows, and once again, I appreciate your time, these just go out. I, I just polish up the sound to make sure it sounds good, but they just go out and be as raw as they can with me scratching and carrying on and the sniffles and things like that. But Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You know, because those are the things we hope resonate with people, right? Like, this is real. Yeah. This is real. There, There's... You know, I'm, we show up without armor. And that's what I want people to start to, to, to get from these podcasts and episodes and things like that, that it's two things. One is it's okay to be broken, right? That, you know, everything in the world breaks and we're included in that, whether it's physical or mental. And the other thing is that it's it's okay to be yourself. Not what others want you to be, but who you wish to be. Your authentic self. Yeah. And that's um, one of the things I close off sometimes with, you know, the, the show is the Peter George experience, success through conversation and experiences, but it's really to help you be the best you can be. That's awesome. Pete, I just yeah. want you to know that I'll support you on this journey any way I can. Yeah, and, you know, like, <clears throat> I hope people reach out to you because you just know 
at the right point to get that little bit extra from someone that will hopefully open them up like that young girl did at the hospital where she went through the the circle of who Peter George was and that's when I realised that pain was just another little dot on the journey of Peter George and it took her to to do it you know like I I knew I probably could have come to you but I didn't feel that it was was right but you know as I said going to the hospital and things like that um, I the mental health unit scared the bejeebas out of me with the, the people that were in there and what they're going through and then to the the team um, that they put you in touch with was phenomenal so there is help there for people and you just got to find it and on um, in a couple of weeks time I'm talking with a guy called David McBride now Dave was part of my recovery and as I say in the in the talk that he didn't do much but he was there for me and that's what it all comes down to yep you know like he turned up which I never used to and that's how you can pick someone with mental illness they don't start turning up but he turned up here didn't judge just listened so and you do the same thing my good friend and you you know we we owe a lot to you as a person thank you peter pleasure <laughs>